Hi, I'm Dave Ferullo, and welcome to my Spiritual Talk series. One of my greatest passions in life are horses. I love riding them, I love training them. I just like being around them. I'd like to share with you some of the lessons and insights that I've learned from these magnificent creatures. Patience. The harder we try to force things to happen, especially in a relationship, with each other or with horses, the more stress and expectancy we create. We push and expect something in return. This is self-serving and will not cultivate a lasting relationship. We do not want compliance. We want a partnership. So relax and have patience. Let the relationship grow on its own terms in its own way. This creates a lasting bond and a solid partnership. Kindness. Being uptight, frustrated, and mad is no way to be, especially in a relationship. Some trainers and owners treat the horses like property, like prisoners. I can always tell these horses by the dull look in their eyes and the reluctant compliance while working. A well cared for and treated horse has a sparkle in their eye and a spring in their gait. These are the ones that gallop down to the gate when their owner comes, when their owner comes for them every day. Kindness is a key with people and horses. If you treat your relationship with kindness, with a kind heart, your partner will always come running to the door with open arms and a smile when you knock. Communications. We think that because we all speak English, we can always understand each other. But what a misconception this is. To understand, we have to listen, really listen. Not just with our ears, but with our hearts, with our senses, and with our intuition. Horses cannot speak, but they tell us volumes. If you are in tune, you will know this. The look in their eyes, the way they hold their head and their tail, the fluidity or tension in their gait. Horses, as we humans, communicate constantly. We just have to learn to listen more than with just our ears. To give and receive. If you are meeting your partner's needs, they will be happy and willing to meet yours. This happens organically, naturally. Horses want to please you. They want to learn. They want to work. They will give you so much. If, you are, if, if they are given what they need, they will give you what you need. If you satisfy your horses and your romantic partner's desires, it will all return to you tenfold. You know, some just don't jive. Contrary to popular belief, you can't just buy any, any old horse and expect to cultivate a close, lasting bond. This goes true with romantic partners. Horses, like humans, are all different with a multitude of personalities and traits. To find the right one, the perfect one for you may take time and persistence. You have to be willing to fail and move on. The important thing to know with horses and people is when it is time to walk away and just try again. Space. Horses need space to run, to play, to graze, and to explore. Denied this, they can become lethargic and develop an array of bad habits. Any horse owner knows this, as do psychologists. People are the same way. Put in an emotional or a psychological box, they react in many negative ways. This will tax a relationship and ultimately lead to its demise. Give your horse and your romantic, sp and your romantic partner space. They will then be happy to run to you when you come around. Partnerships. When people and horses work together, the results are spectacular. Both have to be willing participants. They have to work as a teammates, as partners, and respect the ultimate goal, be compassionate with each other. This is also true with love relationships. Become each other's teammates, help and support each other. Work on the same team towards your common goals together. You will be amazed at what, you're, what you will accomplish together and how your bond and your love will grow constantly. Love. One of the most important lessons that I've learned with working with my horses and from my relationships is love. I once read a definition by J. Christian Murdy. He stated that love is to give of oneself completely without expecting anything in return. To love 
for love's sake, to not expect something or something should ever come of it? A love of a horse is just that, love. A love of a person is just that, love. To love someone truly, unconditionally, is the state we must all strive for. But just because we should not expect a return does not mean that we're not going to get one. If you can love in this manner, in this capacity, I guarantee the gifts you receive will fill your heart and elevate your soul for a lifetime and beyond. So love for the sake of loving all people, all animals, but mostly learn to love yourself.